And we're going to move now to Mr Phil Boxall, um, who is our branch manager for technology and innovation. And he leads an incredibly innovative and capable crew who are uh, just absolutely essential, as Virginia mentioned this morning, to helping us actually implement the science that we want to achieve. Um, Phil has enabled science projects, including the Million Year Ice Core Drill that Taz spoke about. He's currently very focused on commissioning Noena's new science systems and constructing that new krill aquarium. Um, Phil discovered European carp in Tasmania in 1995, but was also a founding member of the project which eradicated them without chemicals from a large public water body. Fun fact, over to you, Phil. Um, thank you for the introduction, Nicole, um, and hello everyone. It's uh, I'm very privileged to be here today um, to represent the Technology Innovation Branch. Um, it's a great privilege to lead such a, a great uh, a great branch within the Australian Antarctic Division. Our motto is to, within the branch, is to innovate, create and achieve in support of science. Um, technology and science have a symbiotic relationship with the new invigorated science priorities and initiatives coupled with increased funding. We have an amazing opportunity for Antarctic science and importantly for increasing influence for the benefit of the nation and the world. So some of the main um, branch purposes are to, we develop new capabilities and emerging technologies for the AAP and also the AAD. We manage core technical functions and facilities. We curate and deliver data mapping and information collections and Dr. Jonathan Cool will have more to say about that in the next talk. And importantly, we also support the AAD to provide world leading platforms um, for great outcomes. We have teams within TNI that also, we design and manufacture everything from tiny electrical systems um, to containerized aquariums up to 10 metre long millionaire ice core drills. This is all in support of science outcomes. We also manage major science projects. So it's been mentioned before by Nicole and also by Rob King, um, we're managing hopefully very soon uh, there'll be an announcement in relation to a new Southern Ocean cruel facility in conjunction with UTAS in Hobart. And we also identify and manage the introduction of new capabilities, you know, for example, long range, dra long range drone technology. I like to think that we help to enable science to be undertaken successfully within Antarctica. And also very lucky that TNI is made up of highly committed, dedicated and experienced personnel able to translate requirements into equipment capable of ongoing operation within the Southern Ocean and Antarctica. So for anyone that's been down, that's not, a, uh, not an easy place in which to conduct science. Some, some background on where we've arrived at the moment was that Noena was delivered in 2021 and it's been mentioned before, an absolute game changer for Antarctic science, for science more generally. It's the um, preeminent platform within Australia um, think of Noena, I, I, like, I like to think of it as a floating station, but it has far more scientific capability than our, what our stations do. Um, the opportunity to use it now and into the future um, is just amazing to think about the way that the ship's been designed and the capabilities we can bring on and off on board that vessel. The recent O'Kane review, which was the external order of the science program, with the recommendations of the Science Decadal Plan for a reinvigorated science program. That's a godsend for technology innovation. That really helps to guide us in relation to the priorities that we need to work on into the future. In addition to that, the, the AAD executive have endorsed the development of a technological decadal plan, which will dovetail nicely into the Science Decadal Plan. I thought I'd just give a quick snapshot of the AAT and it's just in relation to the sheer size of it. 
It's, we have a claim of 42% of Antarctica, but it's at approximately 80% the size of Australia. And we have three small stations in that whole area, and we have one ship. So we see the use of technology will significantly increase our ability to collect scientific data now and certainly into the future. And also the increased use of technology will um, assist in relation to our presence on the ice, in the air and on the water and in the water. Our future capabilities, so here we can see some capabilities which are all, have already been utilised in Antarctica and we, we'd like to think that they will grow into the future. And the role of the technology and innovation branch is to support science with the introduction of new capabilities to support scientific outcomes. And I do apologise, there's been no collusion, but you'll see a number of similar um, shots from uh, other presentations. So future capabilities, so the task at hand so we have a mandate to develop and introduce new technologies to increase our presence, to collect far more scientific data and to support other areas within the AAP such as operations and infrastructure and also importantly enhance our safety in everything we do in Antarctica. We're also, we like to think we'll be integral but I'm sure we will be in relation to the successful outcomes for IDEA and the East Antarctica Monitoring Program. And also we feed into other large projects such as the infrastructure renewal program. And importantly, it's an opportunity for us to de-link de some of the successful science outcomes from being wholly reliant on uh, Noyeda and stations. So we see opportunities to deploy um, capabilities without having that um, dedicated requirement from stations and from ships to enable more science to be undertaken. So some of the challenges we see ahead, um, the scale of Antarctica, as I mentioned before, it's 80% the size of Australia. The isolation, we have to develop and maintain and deploy equipment that's able to withstand the very harsh conditions and extreme conditions as we can see from the photo here. Um, the access to spares to ensure the equipment works correctly um, and the long lead in time in which to actually deploy the equipment. Um, restricted access, it's, we don't have buses and planes going every day to Antarctica, so um, science has to ensure and so does technology innovation in that we feed in f as an enabler for science to ensure that we can take every opportunity available to, to us to deploy uh, relevant equipment and to ensure that equipment works correctly. Um, and we also have, we have competing demands as well in relation to um, demands for, we have to keep stations running um, and we don't have unlimited beds on the station. So we have to really be careful in, re in regards to making sure whatever we undertake in Antarctica has the utmost chance of success. We also have many bespoke issues. The effect of temperature on batteries, materials, plastics and computer boards. The location of the South Magnetic Pole within the Australian Antarctic Territory and the very large magnetic inclination and declination effects. In, a, in essence, you know, compasses don't work like they do here. And also we have the GPS dropout from the single constellation, all issues that we, um, we work with within the branch. Looking forward to remote sensing opportunities. And at the AOD, we have our own Artemis, which I'm happy to say has launched. Um, we chose Artemis for the name as the Greek goddess of nature and we thought that was a very um, uh, opportune name to, um, to put to this uh, rather innovative technology. It's a self-contained system equipped with two cameras, the first for the AAD, a weather station and a satellite link that enables images and weather to be transmitted, transmitted at determined time intervals. We can adjust that from head office in Hobart all powered by 100% renewable energy and from an array of solar panels and batteries that will allow continuous operation even through the Antarctic winter. And this is somewhat similar to a, another um, vision that we saw earlier and this is a, a future vision for technology within the Australian Antarctic Territory. 
This will be guided and informed by the science decadal plan to expand the breadth and quality of science data being obtained. We have a number of items there that will be highlighted, but an interesting area that we'd like to increase um, our capacity and certainly with the formation of the Australian Science Agency, an area that we would like to um, work with closer. But we certainly see space as a force multiplier for more science and there's implications for communications, data and transfer operations and safety and also increased earth observations. The use of long range drones to increase our mapping capacity and again having more up to date maps certainly assists us from a policy point of view but also for safety and for more efficient science operations. The use of drone technology for crevasse detection, again if we have safer programs we can get onto stations quicker and earlier, it means more time for our scientists. The use of drone technology for wildlife surveys for either ship or station. Also the use of drone technology for sea ice detection. Um, this can be used for also monitoring, but importantly, the way that we look at it internally is that when we send Noena to Antarctica to do resupply operations, and in previous vessels, quite often the ships would be delayed through ice. So if we can get somewhat ahead of the game and make that operation more efficient, and it turns a resupply around quicker, that then relates in more time for the ship to be conducting dedicated science. We also have future possibility for cargo deliveries, and this could be small items to fill camps, scientific samples and so forth. And the use of uncrewed surface vessels, which is already being utilised throughout around the world, um, able to operate in close proximity to ice with a suite of scientific instruments which can be altered um, and can be deployed from Australia and to head down to Antarctica. And the use of uncrewed surface vessels for hydrocoustic surveys, for mapping uh, and for hydrographic work. Um, is also certainly a possibility we have now and, and increasingly into the future. And the ongoing use of autonomous underwater vehicles, especially for under ice, um, that sort of technology has already been proven. The technology is coming a lot, um, is progressing very well um, and there's more and more opportunities into the future to use these types of technology to increase the amount of science data that we're generating. And also, into the future, autonomous ground vehicles. So we'll be able to access areas without the need to support deep field deployments of personnel. Now we do have a short movie which will just demonstrate some of the existing technologies and where we're potentially heading into the future. As mentioned, Noena is an absolute game changer but throughout this video it will show we we have a component where we design we manufacture and then we build scientific capabilities so in that instance it was the million year ice core and then you can see the ice core in operation to the end product of where the scientists have the valuable data here's the design of bespoke containerised laboratories for Noena, the wet well that we've already mentioned about. Should mention with the wet well also is that that allows continuous operation on the vessel. The vessel doesn't have to stop. Here we have some marine science engineers developing end of wire packages. So we have four electro-optical cables on Noena with dedicated packages that we can plug onto those, a suite of acousticians and acoustics. This was on the recent first voyage south. A four by four metre moon pool, one of the largest moon pools on the scientific platform. 
and the use of AUVs that's under the Aurora Australis. We've previously seen this, but we've had acoustic moorings being tested. And I believe this is some of Johnny's video footage showing the use of ROVs again down south. And there's Artemis being installed in Davis Station. Uh, the use of wind power. We have our monitoring program for our Nest cameras. And here's some exciting future technologies under consideration. So we have our uncrewed service vessels. So this is known technology. It has already occurred um, down south and they can withstand very harsh conditions that we'll see in a moment. I believe that's a cyclone, a uh, hurricane off uh, Florida. And also the use of uncrewed aerial systems, which will be certainly a game changer in relation to the breadth and the amount of data that can be obtained. That's all, thank you very much. Overall, just all I can say is it's uh, such an exciting time to be working for the Australian Antarctic Division, um, and especially in relation to um, where science is heading. So we're very privileged to play an integral role in, uh, in moving forward, so thank you.